Tonight, 56 Major League Baseball players will participate in a moment they will surely remember all their lives. Baseball's annual All-Star Game, the 51st the such game, which makes it the longest-running All-Star event in American sport. And this ABC Sports Exclusive is brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Shadows of a soft summer day reaching across Dodger Stadium. We're expecting a capacity crowd of more than 55,000 for the ball game. And hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, and we are delighted to be able to bring you tonight's all-star game from Dodger Stadium. You know, long before the word superstar found its way into the American sports vernacular, they played the first All-Star game, 1933 Chicago World's Fair, an idea conceived and promoted by sports editor Arch Ward. Must have been a pretty good idea because it has lived through the years to become one of the longest-running All-Star events in any sport. This being the 51st, it's the first time it's been played here in Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. It was played in Los Angeles in 59, but across town at the Coliseum. At the very beginning of this series, the American League dominated it. They won 12 of the first 16 games played. But with the arrival of the 50s, the pendulum started swinging toward the National League with the Nationals winning 11 of the next 16. And since the 1963 game, the National League has really dominated, winning 16 of 17. And the last time the American League won one of these All-Star games was in Detroit back in 1971. Various means of choosing players for this event have been tried each time, touching off heavy debate. Well, let's deal with that right now, and no one can handle the forensics of the matter more than Howard Cosell. Thank you very much, Keith. Eleven years ago, baseball commissioner Bowie Kuhn restored the right of selection of the All-Stars by way of election to the fans of America. With that annual controversy, accusations such as ballot box stuffing and all of the rest. Yesterday, my colleagues Keith Jackson and Al Michaels spoke to a number of the All-Stars. The key question, should the players or the fans select? The answers begin with Rod Carew to Keith. Well, Keith, I think the players should because they, uh, they know what a ball player is going to be doing, and I think this is going to give the other players a, a good opportunity to make an All-Star team, and it's not going to be a popularity contest. Well, I think there's some discrepancies in each year that the fans... Uh, decide on who comes to the all-star game but moreover than not the, I think the fans do a good job in in choosing the all-stars from each league uh, like I say there are a few discrepancies but the fans are the people who come to the ballpark to watch us play and they vote for the people who they want to see in the all-star game well if you're going to have an, an all-star that's played for the people I think the fans should have uh, rightly so the vote uh, decide who they want to see play I think if you're going to have a true all-star team then I think you ought to have the players vote well in my opinion I think the players and the reason behind it, I think, uh, I think a city like Los Angeles and a city like New York, there's a great number of uh, people in this city, and I think it's an advantage compared to a city like Milwaukee. I really feel that the fans should do it simply because it's, baseball is a business, and uh, baseball is at its peak right now, and then mainly because of the fans. And we owe everything to them, so consequently, I think the commissioner wants the fans to have an involvement in baseball, and the All-Star game is one way of doing it, so I think it's continued to be the All-Stars being voted by the fans and I think they're doing a pretty good job with a few exceptions. One can understand Davey Lopes's position. He was the leading vote getter in the recent All-Star ballot. He starts for the National League. He is presently hitting 236. Right now down to the playing field, my colleague Al Michaels will be sharing play-by-play -play duties with Keith Jackson during the course of today's spray. As in tow, Chuck Tanner, the manager of the National League. Al? Thank you, Howard. Chuck Tanner, Pittsburgh Pirates, managing in his first All-Star game ever. Chuck, I guess two ways for a manager to approach this. Do you stick with your best players and go all out to win, or do you try to clear the bench, get everybody in the game, and make everybody happy? Well, what we're going to do, first of all, is try to win, Al. But I'd like to get all the ball players in that I possibly can. And we have a good bench, so our bench is as good as our starters. So we have a good 28-man roster, and we're going to try to win the ball game. Good luck tonight. Thanks, Al. We've heard from Chuck Tanner. Let's hear from his counterpart, Earl Weaver of the American League. He's with Don Drysdale. Thank you very much, Al. Well, Earl Weaver, after the fans have selected the starting lineup, just how tough is it for the manager to select the rest of the squad? Well, it gets to be quite involved because uh, you use the second choice of the fans whenever you can. Uh, I go to the league for the league statistics, 
you want the best ball players having the best years and every year it winds up about uh, you got 35 36 guys uh, to choose from and you're only allowed 28 and getting down uh, cutting those last seven is very very tough and you know you're hurting some feelings Earl you were the last winning manager good luck thank you very much Don. All right now let's go back upstairs to Keith Jackson all right, Don, thank you very much. And that view there will give you some idea of the kind of day that we have had here, the setting that we are involved in right now. That's, we've got a special show coming up as part of the preamble for this event featuring Walt Disney Productions in just a moment. Here are the 1980 All-Stars. First, the American League. The American League. From the Baltimore Orioles, outfielder Al Bunbury. Representing, representing the Boston, the Boston Red, Sox, Red Sox, an elected an starter who is injured and injured unable to play, to play. Outfielder, outfielder Jim Rice. Jim Rice. Uh, pitcher, pitcher Tom Bergmeier. Bergmeier. From the California From the Angels, Angels, second baseman, second baseman Bobby, Bobby Gritch. Gritch. From the Chicago White Sox, pitcher Ed Farmer. Representing the Cleveland Indians, outfielder George Orta. From the Detroit Tigers, shortstop Alan Trammell. Catcher Lance Parrish. Representing, representing the Kansas City, Kansas City Royals, Royals, another elected another starter, starter presently, presently injured, injured, third baseman third George, George Brett. Brett. Catcher Daryl Porter. Porter. Pitcher Larry Cora. From the Milwaukee the Brewers, Brewers, the third the injured, injured starter, starter, second baseman second Paul Molitor. Molitor. First baseman, First baseman Cecil Cooper. Cecil Cooper. Shortstop, Shortstop Robin, Robin Young. Young. From the Minnesota, From the Minnesota Twins, 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 outfielder Ken, Ken Landro. Landro. <laughs> Representing the New York the Yankees, Yankees. Yankees. pitcher Tommy John. <laughs> pitcher Rich Gossett. <laughs> From the Oakland A's, outfielder Ricky Henderson. From the Seattle Mariners, pitcher Rick Honeycutt. Representing the Texas Rangers, outfielder Al Oliver. Third baseman, Buddy Bell. From the Toronto, From the Blue, Toronto Jays, Blue Jays, pitcher Dave, Dave Steve. The American the League American coaches. coaches. From Baltimore, From Baltimore Frank, Robinson. Frank Robinson. The manager, the manager of the Kansas, of the Kansas City, Royals, City Royals, Jim Fry. Jim Fry. And the balance, the balance of the American, of the American League, League, staff, League staff from the California, from the California Angels, Angels, Bob Clear. Clear. And the trainer and the from trainer Toronto, Toronto, Ken Carson. Ken Carson. <laughs> now the American the League American starting League lineup. Starting lineup. Leading off, Leading off from the New York, the Yankees, New York Yankees, a youthful three-time All-Star, second baseman, Willie Randolph. Willie Randolph.
batting second, batting second. Representing, representing the California, the California Angels, Angels, an all-star 14 Star times, time. first baseman, Rob Carew. Rob Carew. Hitting third from the Boston Red Sox, an all-star since his very first season, center fielder, Fred Lynn. Batting cleanup from the New York Yankees, a nine-time all-star, right fielder, Reggie Jackson. Hitting fifth from the Milwaukee Brewers, the league home run leader, left fielder, Ben Ogilvie. In the sixth position from the Boston Red Sox, five times a fan elected starter, catcher Carlton Fisk. Hitting seventh from the New York Yankees, soon to be the home run champion among American League third basemen, Greg Nettles. Batting eight from the New York Yankees, the hero of the 1978 World Series, shortstop Bucky Dent. And the pitcher warming up in the bullpen from the Baltimore Orioles, a 12-game winner already this year, Steve Stone. The American League manager has led the Baltimore Orioles to four league championships. Here is Earl Weaver. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here are the National League All-Stars. From the Atlanta Braves, outfielder Dale Murphy. Representing the Chicago Cubs, pitcher Bruce Suter. From the Cincinnati Reds, shortstop Dave Concepcion. Third baseman, Ray Knight. Outfielder, Ken Griffey. Representing, representing the Houston, Houston Astros. Astros. Outfielder, outfielder Jose Cruz. Cruz. From, the From the Los Angeles Dodgers. 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 Pitcher Bob, Bob Welch. Welch. And Jerry and Rice. Jerry Rice. Rice. <laughs> representing the Montreal Expos. Catcher Gary Carter. From the New York Mets, catcher John Stearns. From the Philadelphia Phillies, first baseman Pete Rose. The player who was elected as the starting third baseman but is unable to play because of injury, Mike Schmidt. And pitcher Steve Carlton. Representing the Pittsburgh Pirates, infielder, Phil Garner. Pitchers, Jim Bibby and Kent DeColvey. From the St. Louis Cardinals, outfielder, George Hendrick. First baseman, Keith Hernandez. Representing the San Diego Padres, outfielder, Dave Winfield. From the San Francisco Giants, pitcher Ed Whitson. And now the coaches from Cincinnati, manager John McNamara. And from Houston, manager Bill Burton. 
the rest of the National League staff, trainer Tony Bartero from Pittsburgh, Joe Lonnett, Bob Skinner, and from the Dodgers, Tom Lasorda. Now the 1980 starting lineup for the National League. Leading off from the Los Angeles Dodgers, this year's leading boat getter, second baseman, Davey Lopes. <laughs> Batting second from the Dodgers, the National League's leading hitter, center fielder, Reggie Smith. Hitting third, the MVP of the 1979 All-Star Game from the Pittsburgh Pirates, right fielder, Dave Parker. The cleanup hitter from the Dodgers, MVP, both of the 74 and 78 All-Star Games, first baseman, Steve Garvey. Batting fifth from the Cincinnati Reds, the National League starting catcher, 10 of the last 11 years, catcher Johnny Bench. <laughs> Hitting sixth from the Chicago Cubs, his 48 home runs led in major leagues last year, left fielder Dave Kingman. Batting seventh from the St. Louis Cardinals, holder of the National League lifetime fielding record at his position, third baseman, Ken Reitz. <laughs> Batting eighth, the fourth Dodger starter, making his first all-star start, shortstop, Bill Russell. Batting ninth and pitching from the Houston Astros, the first right-hander in league history to strike out 300 batters in one season. Warming up in the bullpen, J.R. Richard. And now the manager of the National League All-Stars managing his first All-Star team from the world champion Pittsburgh Pirates, Chuck Tanner. Now let's meet the honorary captains. The American League captain stepped right out of high school and into the major leagues. He spent the next 22 seasons in a Detroit Tigers uniform. His outstanding accomplishments earned him a first ballot election to the Hall of Fame, and he will be inducted at Cooperstown on August 3rd. The Tigers number six, Al Kaline. Seems like yesterday, Keith, he was a 17-year-old high school kid from Baltimore. Came up with another K, Harvey Keen, to Detroit. Marked influence on his life. His first manager, Fred the Big Bear Hutchinson. The National League honorary captain entered the Hall of Fame in 1969. He is the Dodgers' all-time champion and winning most valuable player honors. Having won the award three times, let's welcome Roy Campanella. I don't think anybody could talk about Roy Campanella better than Don Drysdale, who was a teammate with him, knew him well, worked with him, and the crowd is standing. Well, Keith, I think when you talk about one of the great guys in this game of baseball, you've got to talk about the man who's moving to home plate right now after the tragic accident in the winters of 1956 to 57. Roy Campanella. And what a great man. He came up with a great line that we all use, and I think it can be used in everyday life. But Roy said, you've got to have a lot of little boy in you to play this game. Listen to that hand. More than 55,000 people standing. Quite a man. 
the prelude to the 51st All-Star Game at Dodger Stadium. And so the pregame activities are about done. The game is next. Though it is an exhibition with no impact on the season, winning still sits at the bottom line. One question that deserves to be repeated, is this the year the American League breaks its losing streak? Stay tuned for exclusive coverage next after this word from our local station. The field is still being cleared here at Dodger Stadium for the beginning of the 1980 All-Star Game. The ceremonial first pitch is about to take place. Here is John Ramsey to describe it for you. For tonight's first ball ceremony, professional baseball salutes amateur baseball, the All-Stars of tomorrow. The baseball career begins with the youth leagues, to represent young players everywhere is Jeffrey Hagee of Rancho Bernardo, California. Next comes high school baseball and a representative of all those who play on the thousands of member teams of the National Federation of High School Athletic Associations is Captain Kyle Sorosi of the Los Angeles City League Championship Silmar. The amateur cycle is completed with college baseball. The representative of those who play for the NCAA, the NAIA, and junior college teams is Stan Edmonds of the University of Southern California, a member of the United States Collegiate All-Stars who recently defeated the Japanese College All-Stars. Gentlemen, for amateur baseball everywhere, the first balls, please. And so the ceremonies are concluded. As the shadows reach out onto the green of Dodger Stadium, we'll see baseball in just a moment. Gathered at home plate and a little brush fire that exploded on the hill behind Dodger Stadium in Elysian Park has been already controlled. Thank goodness. The umpires, John Kibler of the National League, will be behind the plate. Larry Barnett of the American League at first, Nick Colosi, National League at second, Jim McKean, American League at third, down the left field line, Jerry Dale of the National League, and Rich Garcia of the American League down the right field line, and now the National Leaguers have come to take their defensive position. And looking at first base, the Iron Man of the Dodgers, he just rolls along in excellence, Steve Garvey. Over at second base, another Dodger, Davey Lopes, who, as was duly noted, the top boat getter in all of the balloting in 1980. At shortstop, another Dodger, Bill Russell, who got a few hoots from the crowd, but Billy having one of his best seasons this year. And over at third, the, this is the man who carries one of the great gloves of baseball history at that position, Ken Reach of the St. Louis Cardinals. In left field, the man with the big bat, Dave Kong Kingman. We know him well around here. He came out of USC. In center field, making the start, Reggie Smith. Reggie in that position. He has played it before. He has had eight starts in center for the Dodgers. Right field, the man who became the MVP a year ago because of his defensive prowess, Dave Parker of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And behind the plate, the remarkable Johnny Bench who just goes along every year in excellence. And on the mound, from the Houston Astros, James Rodney Richard. 
Richard with a record of 10 and 4. He comes in, however, after struggling in his last couple of starts. He has been experiencing stiffness in his right forearm. He uses the word fatigue to describe it, says it is not actually pain, says it may be resulting from the slider. He will have consultation with doctors before he leaves Los Angeles. And yesterday, the Houston manager, Bill Verdon, suggested to Chuck Tenner, the manager, that he maybe use JR for only two innings. For the American League, leading off, it'll be Willie Randolph, followed by Rod Carew, a Yankee and an Angel, and then Fred Lynn of the Boston Red Sox. And the one thing about Willie Randolph is remarkable on-base percentage. It's right to the point. It's incredible. 425 get on base average. There's Gregory Peck, once an usher at the old New York Paramount Theater. A man who came a long way from that initial job. And a tremendous baseball fan of the Dodgers from the old days in Brooklyn. But Willie Randolph with his 425 get on base average. Keith is tied for second in the American League with Jorge Otta of the Cleveland Indians. They are closely behind Paul Molitor. The brilliant second baseman of the Milwaukee Brewers, who has been sidelined with an injury. Randolph stands in. J.R. Richard warmed up at about 95 miles an hour, according to the radar gun. So the big right hander from Houston comes in low for ball one. Louis Kuhn and the former president of the United States, his fourth All Star game in the last five years. Jerry Ford. The shadows are just beginning to reach the home plate area right now as Richard comes in with a strike and with this kind of lighting, Don, it's shut your eyes and be ready to bail out. Well, that's very true, and if you're on the pitcher's side, why, I'll tell you, they can have a little struggle down that dugout to see who's going to go out there and really start the pitching, but it's tough to see, and as that shadow gets to home plate, it's going to be even tougher. You've got James Rodney Richards, six feet, eight and a half inches, 240 pounds. They use the word intimidation in this game of baseball. If that can't intimidate you, nothing can to go with his 90 mile an hour fastball. Fouled off. The tough defensive position right now at this time of the day is right field for Dave Park. That is the sun field. He'll be looking right up against this massive crowd. Multi-tiered stadium and into a high blue sky. On the ground to Davy Lope. A big hop for him, and Willie Randolph is out. Well, there's a lot of these American leaguers that have not seen James Rodney Richards. Yeah, they've seen him maybe a little bit in spring training. I was talking to Reggie Jackson prior to the game, and he says he's just anxious to go up and see him. He said he might get me, but he says I'm anxious to hit off this big guy when he's in shape. JR will show him some speed. Oh, there'll be some heat coming up there. He Rod can show Rod Carew anything, Keith. <laughs> Because Rod Carew can hit anything. Makes it low. Rod had trouble getting started this year with various injuries. Had that same jammed heel that has hurt him and bothered him for quite some time. But he is still a magician with the bat. The pitch flies away from Johnny Bench. Two balls and no strikes, one out. Waiting on deck is Fred Lynn of the Boston Red Sox and then Reggie. I think many times in an all-star game, as you look at Freddie Lynn in the on-deck circle, that if there has to be an advantage at the very start, it's usually in the pitcher's advantage because if they have good stuff, regardless of the hitting, good pitching will stop good hitting. Three balls, no strikes now to Carew. Just noticing how quickly the shadows move. It's already moved about a yard on the home plate in a matter of the first batter to the second. And Drew gets a free pass. Batting third, number 19. Brady Lynn comes to the plate, has a very bad hamstring problem. Cut down some of his work in the batting cage. Threw some batting practice on Sunday in Baltimore, but he is playing hurt did not play the last five games before the All-Star break. Carew is at first, and Freddie is in with Jackson to the on-deck circle. The top of the first inning, a lob to first. Lynn is a master at hitting inside out. Uses the short porch at Fenway's left field very effectively.
trouble getting the pitches into the strike zone. A water drop on the hill back of the stadium, trying to make sure that brush fire is controlled. It's hot and dry in Southern California now. The pitch snaps in, and it's one and one. Reggie Smith is spraying Freddie Lynn straight away in center. Now he edges a little bit toward left center. Kingman is pretty much straight away in left. And a throw to first to hold Carew, who reached the third baseman coming in at third. Well, Rod Carew is an excellent base runner. James Rodney Richards with that big high leg kick. You wouldn't be surprised. You see him take off. He does take off. The pitch is high. The throw by Ben. He's safe. Big, big jump on Richard. Carew with deceiving speed. He's in the class of, I've always put him with the Mazes, the Aarons, the Richie Allens, people like that. He runs with ease and he fools you. The good point there is Henry Aaron. That's who right. Who had a remarkable success in base still. Attempts and stolen bases. Just remarkable and never noted for his speed. Oh, that's true. 2-1 pitch to Lynn. He can now pick up Carew with a base hit. Hits it to the right side. Moves Carew over. Lope throws to Garvey. Two out. Keith, you were talking about James Rodney Richard and as far as maybe easing off a little bit on the slider as Reggie Jackson is introduced, but he hasn't thrown the slider. He stayed with a fastball right now. He figures he's going to go out there two innings. I'll just stay with a fastball and take my chance. With his hummer, that's about all he needs. <laughs> well, it's power and power here as Reggie comes up. It's a moment like this that'll get your juices going. He was the spark in the last American League victory in 71 in Detroit with a gargantuan home run. Remember? That was it. That was the last time as you look at Carew. A long dry spell. Reggie took a good look, checked and held off. And it's one and one. That home run in 19 has Earl Weaver in the dugout. He's, Reggie still has that baseball to hit off the transformer on top of Tiger Stadium and kick back, and he says it's lopsided. Oh, 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 look out. Carew way down the line. Look out. I'll guarantee you one thing. You give Rodney that kind of freedom, and he's going to steal it on you. Watch this again. He came way down the line, and he could have stolen home then with ease. I would think the American Leaguers are a little thin-skinned about not having won a game since 1971. That pitch is high. And now it is three balls and one strike to Reggie Jackson with two out and Carew on third. One coming. Three and two. Glad you didn't get cheated. No, sir. That's what you say. Unbutton those top buttons and take a good swing. <laughs> That's what you say? That's what they say. 94 miles an hour. That's getting it up there. That is really rushing it up there. That might have been the slider. I can't read a slider from this angle. Might have been it. It was. It was a quick, one of the quickest sliders known to mankind. <laughs> That's right. Trap it. Three-two coming. <laughs> Bench chases him. He's out. He wanted to fake it for a minute, and then he decided he couldn't. <laughs> so the American League fails to score in the top half of the first inning. The National League coming up in a moment. For the American League, California's Rod Carew will be at first base. The New York Yankees' Willie Randolph opens at second base. Another Yankees at shortstop. That is Bucky Dent. Over at third base, another Yankee, Greg Nettle. Great one at third. 
Out in left field, Ben Ogilvy in his first All-Star game. In center field, it is Fred Lynn of the Boston Red Sox. And over in right field, the New York Yankees, Reggie Jackson. Back of the plate from the Boston Red Sox, Carlton Fisk. Right elbow's getting better. And on the mound, it is Steve Stone with a record of 12 and 3. In contrast to James Rodney Richard, Steve Stone stands 5 feet 8 and a half inches. His first All-Star game since he pitched in 1965 with the Ohio High School All-Star team, and that's worth mentioning because his teammates included at shortstop Thurman Munson, third base Gene Tennis, and center field Larry Heisel. Davy Lopes will lead it off, and Davy Lopes will take that trophy and put it in his den at home because he was the top vote getter of 1980, 3 million. 800,000. First time in four years that Rod Carew lost the honor. Lopes to lead off, then Reggie Smith and Dave Parker. Steve Garvey hitting cleanup, and Bob Welch is already in the bullpen warming up for the National League. So J.R. Richard may go only two. There's Big Bob, who is having a very successful season for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now again, the shadows worth mentioning. The pitcher's in the sun, the hitter is in total shadow, and Stone is on away for ball one. Remarkable story in this young man. A peer career apparent layover, rotator cuff problem, rejected surgery. Foul tip for a strike. Went to a kinesiologist, muscular therapy, after knocking around the National League, the American League, back to the National League with the Cubs. Finally, uh, free agentry, joining Baltimore after he'd lived up to his word with Bill Beck and the White Sox. And now here he is, all the way back. Breaking pitch over the hole. Greg Nettles, a great play. Got him. <laughs> Paul Lasorda, he thinks he's seeing the 1978 World Series all over again. <laughs> he can do it all. You talk about a man who's going to become the all-time third baseman, his home runs, but look what he can do with a glove. The ball comes up for him, that's a plus. But now, as quick as he can get to his speed, loaf with excellent <laughs> speed, and it's a bang-bang play at first. Greg's still growling about what happened to him in the 79 All-Star game. He lost the glove that he had used for six years. Then he went down home to Southern California and had that lawnmower accident. So it was not a happy all-star break for him a year ago. Reggie Smith swings and fouls it off. I you noted the... earlier, Keith, I'm sorry, Don. You noted earlier, Keith, that Reggie had played eight games in center field for the Dodgers, and of course they won them in center tonight because he knows this light situation so well. Hitting from his power side right now. High fly ball to right center. Carrying all the way back to the fence for Fred Lynn. Just missed it. Chip Carter. Enjoying the scene. What little breeze we do have here is going to aid the left-hand hitter. It's blowing straight out. It'll swing around and blow to right. That ball got up in the wind and carried a little bit further. Steve Stone had a few anxious moments on the mound. You could just see him wishing that ball down. Dave Parker with 10 home runs and a 286 average at the plate. The big man from Pittsburgh. Two out and nobody on. And when you're high to Dave, you're high. <laughs> I talked with Steve prior to the game. He just tickled to death to be here. He's more than tickled to be selected as a starting pitcher and certainly deservedly so with a 12 and 3 mark. He's changed his style a little bit. I was going to talk about that a moment ago as Parker doesn't get the fastball. He's working a little faster. He's got the curveball, throwing it more for strikes. And, of course, when you're working a little faster, that aids the fielders behind you. You don't get them back on their heels. Steve took the time to write 31 personal thank you notes to his teammates and coaching staff. 
or making it possible for him to enjoy the moment that he has in hand right now. Classic guy. One and two, the count on Dave Parker. Steve Garvey is on deck. Just outside. And when you say he's changed his style, originally he was a fast baller. Oh, he was a hard striker. thrower. He he's learned how to pitch. He had to because of the rotator cuff problem. Exactly, Howard. That's exactly right. He has now become a pitcher. He's high to make it three balls and two strikes. You can see the pattern that he's trying for Parker. If you're going to pitch to Parker, you're going to try and tie him up inside. As you look at the American League leaders in wins, Stone and John right there on top with Morris, Gurren, Norris right behind. But Parker, you try and move that ball, go right up the ladder, as they say, inside if you can. Look at Carlton Fisk in the sign. He hit the spot with it and strikes out Dave Parker. And so we have played one inning in the 1980 All-Star Game at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. And we have no score on a lovely warm summer evening. Gentlemen, we draw your attention to the commissioner's box on the home plate end of the National League dugout. Baseball is extremely pleased to welcome his fourth All-Star Game in the last five years. The former president of the United States, President Gerald Ford. Former president returns to his box seat with a commissioner and will go now to Ben Ogilvy, Carlton Fisk, and Greg Nettles for the American League in the top of the second inning. One of Ben's teammates, Paul Molitor, the second baseman, is uh, here but cannot play because of injuries. Jim Rice is here but cannot play. George Brett is here but cannot play. Vida Blue would have been asked to the All-Star team, but he also is injured. J.R. Richard on the mound comes walking in for a new baseball right here. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is WXYZ TV Channel 7 Detroit. Bob Welch warming in the bullpen for the National League behind J.R. Richard. And Richard having trouble getting the ball in the strike zone goes to 3 0 on Ben Ogilvy with 21 home runs. First all-star appearance for Ben. He's knocked in 56 for the Brewers. Richard is in there. It's three and one. Dusty Baker is one of those players who was sort of a victim in numbers this year. Having a terrific first half of the season for the Dodgers. But he is not on the team. A lot of noise in this part of the country about it. Whoa, whoa what a bullet. There are your home run leaders in the American League. You can see Ben sitting at the top. I saw him hit one in April at Yankee Stadium, deep into the upper deck, and he did it against Gidry. He walks, second walk issued by J.R. Richard. I had, I had the feeling, Keith, that when he connected with that blow against Gidry, bang, you could just sense the confidence in him, and it's held together all spring and early summer. Here's the guy the Boston Red Sox need desperately. Need him healthy. Carlton Fisk, catcher. Ogilvy at first. Garvey holds him. Straight away defensively. Four Fisk. Strike one. There was a slider. That was a slider. That's exactly right. That's what makes JR so tough. He's got that real good fastball, but on top of that, he doesn't lose much velocity when he go, comes back at you with that hard slider. And when he gets it down and away in that position right there, he's double tough. Check of the runner. Big kick. Strike two. The Dodgers are kind of hoping that this activity may take JR out of the Houston rotation because Houston comes in here Thursday and Friday. 
And normally when JR walks out to the mound, and throws his glove out there, the Dodgers roll over. He is really rough on them. The two strike pitch to Fisk. Second strikeout, and that, ladies and gentlemen, was a fastball at better than 100 miles an hour. Radar gun says 101. You won't see Carlton take swings like that too many times. He was just kind of overmatched at that time at bat. Now, Greg Nettles will get a chance to challenge JR. Approaching the all-time home run record for American League third baseman, he's hit 265. Brooks Robinson holds the record at 266. Strike one. American League makes send an emissary over to the National League dugout to make sure that Chuck Tanner adheres to the request of Bill Burden, only using <laughs> two innings. <laughs> That's slow. Of course, Welch will bring some speed to the mound, too. They've got a few that can bring some heat up there. I want to see another Welch-Jackson confrontation. Yeah, remember that? Beautiful. What a great moment. Of this generation, anyway. It's low. Count is two and one. thrown 26 pitches now in the ball game. He's thrown a lot of pitches. One and a third innings. Runner goes. Nettles pops it up. Foul ground. Third base side. Ken Reitz. Two down. goes back to first and here's Bucky Dent Yankee shortstop Bucky Dent's first all-star game was in 1975 it was played in Milwaukee on the way to the stadium his car started smoking veering fire turned it off posted about a quarter mile or so into the parking lot took a deep sigh ran for the clubhouse and played Runner goes, pitch punch to the right side, base hit, Ogilvy turns, goes to third, Parker whips it back in. Really manipulated that bat. Well, he just laid the bat on the ball. That's all there was. Ogilvy running, he made it to third easy because you've got that strong arm in right field of Dave Parker. Here's the pitch one more time. Wasn't a real good pitch, but he just lays the bat on the ball. That's all it is. And with Lopes covering, no chance whatsoever to make a play. And so Bench goes to the mound to talk to Jr. With Ogilvy going over to third, and with two out, the American League now with a threat. And what they might be talking about right here, you've got runners at first and third, two out, Steve Stone, the pitcher at the plate. And Johnny Bench certainly aware of what Earl Weaver might do. He knows the reputation of Weaver. Watch that double steal or possibly a delayed steal where they try and steal a run with Ogilvy at third. Ogilvy runs well. Looked like Steve said to Johnny when he came back, you don't really think I'm going to bunt. Are you off that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Not with two out. <laughs> uh, foot in the bucket. Way to go, Steaver. Ball one. Ogilvy. At third, Dent at first. See how much Stone bails out on Richard here. That's not bad. Pretty good swing, as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, it was in the 
coach's box at third <laughs> base. You know, the only guy that I can relate to when you think of the size of James Rodney Richards, six feet eight and a half, is remember Gene Conley? Seemed yeah. like every time that he took his stride, he was out on the grass out there somewhere throwing it. Steve's gone. And so the American League is turned away in the top of the second inning, stranding two after one and a half in this 1980 All-Star game. There is no school. That gives you some index, Keith, of what Garvey has been, the second leading hitter in all All-Star games. That Herman, by the way, Billy. is Billy Herman. Seven years with the Cubs, three with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Well, four of those guys were here at Dodger Stadium the other day in the Old Timers game. Of course, two were playing with Slaughter and Herman in the Old Timers game. Charlie Geringer's old milk bottle bat. <laughs> Steve Garvey will lead it off for the National League. There's the kick that somebody's going to get chunked out of in a little while. Johnny Bench and then Dave Kingman. Steve Garvey leading the major leagues and runs batted in with 66. He's saying Billy Herman's name brings back so many. He was the best I ever saw at the hit and run. Yes, sir. He's just superb. And you just saw Dent executed so well for the Yankees. But Herman, with him, it was an absolute science. Steve Stone retired the Nationals in order in the bottom of the first inning. Now we're in the bottom of the second, and the pitch to Garvey is high. Steve in his seventh All-Star game was a write-in All-Star in 1974 was the MVP. Then in 1978 in San Diego, a single and a triple to win the MVP honors, and that pitch is high and tight. Two balls and no strikes. They started in 78 at San Diego when the workouts the day prior to the All-Star game, the public was invited free. They continued it yesterday. They had over 30,000 here at Dodger Stadium to enjoy the afternoon. And the bat goes flying, and John McNamara is loose down at third. That was one of the best scenes I ever witnessed in 78 yeah. at San Diego. And then, of course, there's Dave Winfield with his funding for the young kids. He has, been, he has done so much. Speak, of course, of the former University of Minnesota, great all-around athlete and the star of the San Diego Padres. Incidentally, you heard about what happened to Fontaine today. I heard that Bob Fontaine was replaced as general manager of the San Diego Padres. We don't know who by yet. Well, there is a story out as you look at the National League RBI leaders, led by Mr. Garvey. That Jerry Coleman, the old Yankee infielder, may be promoted upward from field manager to general manager, in which case, if the rumor proves out, Doug Rader, <laughs> managing Hawaii, would come up. Harvey swings and misses to make it two and two. That's a pretty fast move by Jerry Coleman out of the broadcast booth, from field managing job to general manager, all before you could turn around and say howdy. <laughs> I remember when he was struggling in perspiring over a typewriter at the radio station down the road down there. That's right. Garvey punches it foul up in the crowd, and there's the first souvenir. Well, the commissioner likes his hot dog. Telephone call. <laughs> News bulletin, Ed Tutal Jones flying to Dallas, apparently to sign with the Cowboys. After watching Scott Ledoux last night, I thought he might go back to boxing. 2-2 Two -two pitch to Garvey. Garvey pops it up. Bench coming back may have a play. No, it is not Bench. It is Fisk. Excuse me. Carlton Fisk. The fastest pitch thrown to the plate by uh, Stone. 90 miles an hour. The slowest pitch to the plate from J.R. Richard. 93 miles an hour. Carlton Fisk's elbow a couple of ten days ago looked like a battlefield. But he's, he's coming back from it quite well. Now Johnny steps in, the big guy of the Cincinnati Reds with 11 homers and a 280 average. Still talking about forming a country music team one of these days and hitting the road. What a marvelous athlete he's been and still is. Get on the ground sharply, Bucky Dent. And you've got 
two down. Starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time next Monday, July 14, ABC News will take the floor at the Republican Convention, Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. Convention coverage with the innovating impact you've come to expect from ABC News. Joining for the first time as anchors, two of the best, Frank Reynolds and Ted Koppel. Barbara Walters will take you behind the scenes with special interviews, special editions of 2020 to make the coverage complete for you. ABC News beginning Monday, July 14, convention coverage. Republican convention out of Detroit. Dave Kingman, who had him talking yesterday with howitzers <laughs> into the pavilion. <laughs> He hit some 500 feet high. Has had injury troubles of late. Ten home runs for the big guy. Started only a handful of games in more than three weeks. He had a collision at home plate in May. Hurt his shoulder. And he's been slowed since that time. Oh, that one bit the plate umpire, John Kibler. Pretty, isn't it? Yes, it is. Downtown Los Angeles. It's thought you ought to have a look at a tall building. You might not feel totally at home out here in the Wild West. Wise guy. <laughs> we got more than that in one block. <laughs> You're right, You're you right. do. A one and one count with two out. And Steve Stone pitching to Dave Kingman with Carlton Fisk back of the plate. With the exception of Rod Carew at first, it's a Yankee infield and Kingman swings and it's one and two. Well, you know the thing about Dave Kingman, after the game, he's heading to San Diego to do some fishing, and Howard, you know, he wants to publicly invite you to go deep sea fishing. I don't know what kind of a fisherman you are. Well, I hope his casting is better than that swing because he went after a eye-high fastball and struck out. So Steve Stone gets the first six National Leaguers in order. We have a new pitcher now for the National League, so it means that Chuck Tanner conceded that uh, Bill Burden had a point in keeping his big guy to two innings. So J.R. Richard is gone. The American League not on the scoreboard. Welch pitched six and two-thirds innings on last Saturday. And this story about Major League attendance for 1980. Last week, look at that. 2,280,000. A season almost 21 million. Yes, I remember times in the past when they talked about the old game dying. But it's become one of the best recreation dollar buys anywhere in the land. That happens to be true. And last week was simply incredible. 59,000 plus to watch the Denver Bears play in Denver and 73,000 plus to watch the Indians in Cleveland against the Yankees. That's how they got that kind of attendance figure which a beautiful new message screen just reported. Top of the order for the American League, Willie Randolph is up there and the count is one and one. Bob Welch of the Dodgers now on with a record of nine and three. Bobby also a strikeout pitcher with 67 so far this season. Bob won his last start. He pitched last Saturday, went six and two thirds inning against the Giants that he won three to two. He's got more wins right now than all last year. His off year last year he was five and six. Right now nine and three. That's the respect to the American public for his remarkable rehabilitation that he was so open about. The sound of helicopters in the background, that pitch is fouled off. Sound of helicopters in the background, we had a brush fire just as we started the ball game, and the Los Angeles Fire Department pounced on it, made water drops to control it as quickly as possible because the growth of brush has been quite heavy. We had a lot of rain during the past winter, and the fire danger is pronounced. Boy, oh, they were quick to act. Good thing they did. Yuka was already leaving the ballpark. <laughs> Bob Euchre is with us, and Willie Randolph punches one through the right side for a base hit. Bob Euchre. Now let's join him with J.R. Richard. Thank you very much, Keith and J.R. Richard. Uh, you seem to be nervous in the first inning, only around 93, 94 miles an hour. Second inning, up around 100, 101. 
Well, I felt pretty good. I think when I went out there, a little jittery, first time being in the All-Star <laughs> game, and uh, then I began to relax as the game progressed, and I felt a lot better, and I feel real strong now. I felt I could have gone back out there, but I don't think he wanted to take any chances, but I felt super, and it's great to be here. Back up to you, Keith. Thank you, Bobby. Whoa, it's close at first. First base umpire, Larry Barnett, American League. Another look at it. That was close. It was right on the money. It was close. <laughs> I love to watch Carew bat. Point's been made many times as to his adjustability at the plate. The man with a variety of batting stances. The man who adjusts to the nature of the opposition pitch in the attempt to catch Randall. I've never understood why other batters didn't do that more, Keith. Because they can't do with their hands and arms what he can, I guess. Well, he's got a few hitters around that American League that have had little chats with him. They take Whoa. another close. Look at it, got it! <laughs> well, it's a good move over there. And this time he drove the spike. And he, Willie Randolph. Randolph just leaning the wrong way, and he had something on it. There's a tag of Garvey and a good call by Larry Barnett. There's another angle. You see Randolph off balance, and the tag made, and he's there. And if you think that's not an embarrassment, you saw Randolph loath to get off the dirt. Now the bases are clean as Guru takes up two and two. Reggie Smith this time with Guru up there against Welch is even more so over in left center. Guru walked off J.R. Richard, stole second. There you see the big hole in right center. Straight back. 2-2 two, two remain. Keith is still hard to see here. The shadows have covered just about all of the infield outside of Steve Garvey at first base, but that sun is still shining on that backdrop, and it's still tough to see. How? There you can see the shadows. Won't be long. It'll all... A bright day like this, the shadow, uh, shadows are stark, too. That's punched down the left field line. Drops for a base hit. Kingman's throw. Carew heading for second. He's there. Oh, does that Randolph pickoff loom big now? Mm. Watch the swing of Carew. Ball is actually by him a little bit. He just takes it to the opposite field, now slicing away from Kingman. Dave gets over there in a hurry, but the big guy just takes a little while to stop, stop that momentum. His throw is offline just a little bit, and Carew's got to play right in front of him in an easy stand-up double. He may have a sore shoulder, but he went at that one with some vigor, didn't he? Too hard. Here's Fred Lynn. Beautiful pitch. Yelling away. One strike pitch. Lynn fouls it off the handle and drops in the crowd. Nice catch. Freddie bouncing out with the second baseman Lopes his first time up. The flag right now in center is virtually still. Pitch is high. One ball and two strikes. Strikes out. And here we go. Two down, and we remember 1978 with oh. this confrontation, Reggie Jackson and Bob Wells. The way it was the first time here at Dodger Stadium, and the youngster struck out Reggie Jackson, and the fans went wild. The second time around, Jackson just stood there and seemed to measure the kid. 
and then hit a majestic home run. And in his dramatic way, just stood there and watched it at home plate. It's a kind of scene that this kind of sport can produce. So individualistic, even though it is in the ultimate a team game. On the corner, and the crowd reacts. Hit a good spot on him, too, down and away. Reggie still might be looking for that heater up and in. Fastball had some run in it. When he gets he gets the ball up and he threw that ball 93 miles an hour, that ball will tail up and away. Carew off second. High. One and two. Two out. No score in the ball game. And the American League at bat in the top of the third inning. Appeals, third base umpire. Jim McKean says no. Well, he's got the pitch up. That's a tough pitch for Reggie to lay off of, but he's got it. Pretty close. <laughs> High foul floating into the crowd, left side. You know what I like to see this year? They've come out, they've got all the umpires dressed alike. The American League and the National League got together and said, boys, let's dress them all the same way. And I think it really looks good. Before you had the maroon and the blue against the National, that's the American League. The National League was all light blue and dark blue, but they're all the same. They're all uniform. I think it looks good. Guns loaded at two and two. Oh, come on, guys. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes, two out, no score. Welch and Jackson. Foul back. I was just sitting here thinking, what if he throws him a 3-2 curveball? You were. Or what? You, you see, he just missed that pitch. <laughs> you he bet just he did. missed it. You bet. He throws him a 3-2 curveball. I believe Reggie Why might do a headstand. You were sitting thinking. You were on the floor <laughs> ducking the foul. I was not. <laughs> Ball bounces away from Johnny Bench. Ball four for Jackson. Carew moves over to third. By the way, I think we should avail ourselves of a quick moment to congratulate Don Drysdale. Another great occasion a couple of days ago when for the second time he made an old timers appearance in the last few weeks and got nobody out. And I've got to tell you the same thing as I told some other of our friends. <laughs> if I could still get people out, I'd still be playing. <laughs> That's right. Here's Sandy Koufax comment after he was sent out with the bases loaded to face Aaron. <laughs> All right, that's a wild pitch advancing Carew over to third base. Now here is Ben Ogilvy. Two out and two on. Foul left side out of play. Go back to the top of the inning when Randolph's singled and was picked off. That pickoff had prevented a big inning. Pitch is high to Ben. It's one and one. Kind of a wiry guy, Ogilvy. And Howard, you talked about the home run he hit before at Yankee Stadium. When he hits him, he can hit him as far as anybody. We've commented on that before. He's got great power. He's got an iron wrist. Oh, he's strong. That's fouled off. The way he wags that bat up there looks like it almost bends. But a wagon tongue. Cecil Cooper says he's the masher. Every time he hits one, he just rushes. Cooper's not bad either. No, <laughs> he's not. Ben started to go, held on it. A little worried two. about the call. You saw how quickly he turned to the home plate umpire. 
It was a close pitch. Johnny's got his glove. They're trying to look like they're setting him up inside, and he just misses right there. 2-2. Two -two. Bat explodes. Ball is fouled off. Chikar sawing them off. <laughs> yeah. Watch the bat explode. That is jam job. Steve Garvey saying, help! <laughs> Jackson ran. Don't blame him. Jackson's having a good time out here. He's yes. enjoying this little outing, especially in front of these Dodger fans. He remembers the Dodgers with great fondness. 2-2 <laughs> two -two now to Ogilvy with two on and two out, a no score, top of the third inning. Welch strikes out Ogilvy with a high fastball. And so the National League pitchers continue to hold the American League at bay at two and a half, no score. Harvey Corman, one of the many Hollywood notables here for the occasion. Stop play acting. Watch the game. Now we know where Bob Euchre got the design the for his sideburn. <laughs> Ken Reitz, Bill Russell, and the pitcher spot for the National League. Tommy John is now warming up in the bullpen for the American League. He will follow Steve Stone. Stone has retired the first six. National League hitters, he's faced. Reitz at 282. Got a kick out of something Tommy John said. He said, after they see Steve for three innings, I'll come on and look fast. <laughs> That's right. Little check swing gets by Stone. Randolph hurries and throws him out. There's TJ, crank it up. Tommy John. Wife Sally is out here with him. 12 and 3. Dodger administration freely say that uh, they made a mistake when they let him get away. And that's hindsight. Bill Russell. Stone breaks it off outside and low. The delay from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. You know, we kid have some fun. That's what the whole thing is about. Baseball is a summer of entertainment. Russell hits it high in the air to the left side for the left fielder Ogilvy. And Ben makes the catch for out number two. But I do want to make this point since we're at all-star time. 1954, our big buddy up in the booth with us, Don Drysdale, had three perfect innings. Don has been in eight All-Star games, started five, won two. His 19 and a third innings of pitching in All-Star competition is still a record, and his 19 strikeout is still a record. So, Big D, we're proud of you. Thank you. But if he had been dedicated, he'd have done better. <laughs> <laughs> Welch is going to hit. The Dodger pitcher looks, it's outside. There's the story on Big D. struck out 19. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> we should put up hit by pitcher. <laughs> Most guys hit the hell than that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Welch the better. And it bit the plate umpire, Kipler. Stone is perfecting the check swing. <laughs> Bob Welch not a bad hitting pitcher. Swings the bat pretty good. With two out, nobody on. Foul back, one and two. The American League pitching staff coming into this ball game was much more rested than was the National League staff. Breaking pitch, the old deuce shoots him down. So. I must tell you, Keith, without meaning to interrupt you, that Steve Stone, as he goes off there, is the first American League pitcher since Denny McLean to pitch three hitless innings for the American League. 
And the score continues 0-0. Dodger Stadium, sun going down in the west. The old place is full, and here are the changes now. Defensively, with Phil Garner of the Pittsburgh Pirates going in at second base. Kenny Griffey of the Cincinnati Reds is in left field now, replacing Dave Kingman. And going back at the plate from the New York Mets, John Bad Dude Stern. He was becoming a prize fighter during the recent series against Montreal. He was a pretty fair prize fighter when he played defensive back at University of Colorado, too. He's a tough kid, but as we've said, I never saw a ball player could fight. <laughs> All right. The National League is still without a hit. As we go to the top of the fourth inning, the American League with three hits, but they've been turned away. And Carlton Fisk struck out his first time up facing J.R. Richard and looks happy that uh, James Rodney's gone. <laughs> now let's see what Fudge can do against Bob Welch. Well, same story. He wasn't happy with his own swing. <laughs> J.R. got him in a bad groove. <laughs> you see him talking to himself there? Well, players have some great conversations with themselves. Outside corner, two strikes. Fudge tells the story of the 72 All-Star game, his rookie year, and he was warming up Gaylord Perry in the bullpen. He was so nervous he couldn't catch a blame thing. Ball bouncing all over the plate, and Gaylord growling at him. Struck him out on three pitches. And finally, uh, they came into the game together, and guess who comes up? Mm-hmm, Henry. This says Perry shook him off three times because Gaylord wanted to throw the wet one. <laughs> he said he finally threw it, and Aaron hit it in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Familiar story, isn't it? Greg Nettles, Yankee third baseman, popped out to Kenny Reese first time up. Three strikeouts for young Welch. Outside. Well, the crowd speaks for itself there. Beautiful ballpark. Really is. Really Setting. is. I still resent it. <laughs> no. Oh, come, oh, on. come on. <laughs> Carl Reiner enjoying the festivities. <laughs> One and two on Greg Nettles. Welch has got that thing moving around. Oh, it's whistling. He struck out two in the top of the third. He got Fisk, top of the fourth. That's a foul back. They experimented with all kinds of different soils in building this stadium. There's Tony Tennille that you saw singing the national anthem. And the captain. And the captain. Nettles fouls it back. They finally replaced this past January native soil, which came out of the Van Nuys area, just over the mountains of the San Fernando Valley. Skin part of it. I think they decided on a Tom Seaver specimen. After all, he's a principal <laughs> geologist. <laughs> right. Made a study of the turf in all ballparks. Mm. Nice shot. Two balls, two strikes. Greg Nettles. No score. That's a shot. Right to Garvey. Steve will make the play himself. Two down. Now here's Bob Euchre with Johnny Bench. Thank you very much, upstairs gang. And right here we got Johnny Bench, as you can see, really keyed up about tonight's game. Uh, John, earlier this year uh, on a Monday night telecast, uh, you talked maybe this might be your last year catching. True or not? Yeah, this is my last All-Star ca game catching. I'm, I feel like I've had enough, and I don't want to break your record. Uh, <laughs> I've had 13 of them, and I know if I go much farther, I'll break your record. <laughs> Back upstairs, guys. <laughs> Way to go, Johnny. Catch you later. <laughs> Bucky Dent is at the plate. George Orta has come to the on-deck circle. Oh, 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 look out. Banged right up and hit him in the face, didn't it? 
think I got him right around the eye. Bucky a little off balance on this particular swing. Curve ball. You see that he's out and he comes up and got him right around the eye or maybe on the cheekbone. Bucky had that severe cut on his wrist, just got back on the active list, started playing again. That was Jim Fry of Kansas City had come out along with Carter Home to check on him. Tell you when you look at the history of the All-Star game, certain injuries are memorable. Dizzy Dean. There was a day at Evans yeah, Field sure. when Ted Williams damaged his shoulder. Ken Carson of Toronto, the trainer for the American League. And Bucky goes down swinging, so Bob Welch has struck out four in his two innings of work. At the end of three and a half, there is still no score in the 1980 All-Star Game. League, the Yankees' Tommy John with a record of 12 and three. He worked here, and this is almost his second home, he feels. So he's in in relief of Steve Stone and Robin Yount will be at shortstop now. The Milwaukee Brewers, brilliant young player, went up at age 18 out of Woodland Hills, California. And what Earl Weaver would do right here, Keith, he'll make the double switch as he takes Dent out. He made the last out, so Tommy John will hit in the eighth spot, and Robin Yount will lead off the next inning for the American League. He will be hitting in the ninth spot or the pitcher spot, the worst starting pitcher spot. So it's John hitting eighth and Yount hitting ninth. Tommy John, who had the arm breakdown on him here, had it restored. And now, one of his favorite lines is that, what do you mean, I'm getting along? Arm's only three years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was down there on the bench just prior to the game and waiting for us to go on the air when I was talking with Earl Weaver, and it was Earl Weaver who brought Tommy John over and talked to Steve Stone along with Tommy John. He says, Tommy, how do you pitch him? You were here. Yep. The book on Stone, 24 pitches, three perfect times. Just zip, zip, struck out three. Didn't walk anybody. Jerry Royce now in the National League bullpen. The Major League's only no-hitter came from this man so far in this season. Nine and two record, and his career has turned around. Bill Garner at the plate for the National League. Bill fouls it off. Pirates second baseman. Now, tell me John's kind of a practical joker. As he came out here to the All-Star game, he got the inside of his glove and he dyed it. And he was going to set it next to Weaver on the bench. So Weaver would look at it and think there might be grease in there. Tommy, you know, a lot of people talk about Tommy John and says, well, he might have a little doctor's degree as far as baseballs are concerned. One and one count on Phil Garner. They sing one of the men I most respect in baseball. How back. You talk about getting the most out of what you've got to give. This man epitomizes it in the way that Eddie Stanky once did. Through three innings, National League has not been able to get a base hit. Off Steve Stone. John in relief and Garner beats another one in the ground foul. It goes into the dugout. Bill can't really play though until he gets dirty. He's got to get out there and thrash around a little and get his britches <laughs> dirty. And then... Until he makes a key error as he did in the first game of the <laughs> World right. Series last year. And after that, wow, did he take off. Tommy John pitched eight innings on Saturday against Cleveland to get his 12th win. Swing and a miss, and that sinker just dove down. And now let's meet Steve Stone with Bob Euchre. Thank you, Keith. And Steve Stone, uh, Don Drysdale talked earlier in the game about a, a new type of Steve Stone this year. Why? Well, I just believe that I have a positive attitude this year, and I, I look back over my career, and I dwelt a lot on the negatives. I tried not to lose. This year, I'm going out to win. 12 and 3. It's been a nice year so far, but the ball club has supported me. Back upstairs to you, Keith. Thank you, Bobby. I'll tell you one thing, next time I go to Baltimore, I'm going to supper with Steve Stone. Here's a pitch to Reggie Smith. Breaks in. Strike. I doubt that Yuka will go with Johnny Bench. <laughs> First man to be upstage by Bench. Johnny's forming his new career. Reggie Smith, switch hitter, going from the right side, fouls it off to make it two strikes. He will if Johnny picks up the tab. <laughs> <laughs> 
which he would do. Yes, he would. With Euchre, he has no choice. <laughs> One of the reasons that Reggie Smith has had the big start here in 1980 for the Dodgers, over the winter months, there was some, really some worry about his future, his career. He's been able to get his legs healthy, and they've stayed sound for him, and the ball to Robin Young. He gets his first opportunity in the All-Star game and throws out Reggie. Two down. Now Dave Parker to face Tommy John. It is the bottom of the fourth inning of the National League without a hit. American League with three. Al Michaels is going to come along in the middle of the fifth. He's liable to stir things up. <laughs> Glad it's Al, not me. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the first time this year we don't have to worry about Drysdale killing us off. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Two out. Parker up. And Big Dave takes it low. Parker struck out swinging to end the first inning for the National League. High pop to the left side, carrying out into short left center. Fred Lynn comes over and makes the catch, and the inning is over. So Tommy John gets the Nationals in order in the fourth, and we continue with a scoreless game. So Dave Winfield is now gone to right field, replacing Dave Parker of Pittsburgh. A 306 average for his bat. Good defensive man in center field, George Hendrick of the St. Louis Cardinals. Now replacing Reggie Smith. George Hendrick, who has been toting a big bat for the Redbirds, especially during their resurgence at 311, his batting average. And Jerry Royce is warming up in the bullpen for the National League. Now in the top of the fifth inning for the American League, we're waiting for Robin Yount right now. Let's go back to Bob Euchre and Davey Lopes. Thank you, Keith, and uh, this is the top vote-getter in the All-Star game this year. And, Dave, you made a statement uh, yesterday. You said uh, if you would have voted, you wouldn't have voted for yourself. Who would you have voted for? I would have voted for Manny Trio. I think he's having the best year, the second baseman, and then really that's not saying too much. <laughs> <laughs> but it was an honor for you. Uh, it's quite an honor, isn't it? Yes, I was extremely pleased with the uh, voting by the fans, and uh, I think actually the American League was stuffed in the ballots. They wanted to see the worst <laughs> team here in the National League, and they uh, was hoping that I'd get out there this year. <laughs> Thank you, Davey. Back up to you, Keith. <laughs> He's liable to become pretty worrisome in the second half of the season. This is Robin Young, the shortstop for the Milwaukee Brewers. Already this year, a career high in home runs. Previous best had been nine. But he's doing better than that this year. He's been on the weight program to increase his strength. That's on the ground to the shortstop. Russell waited on it. I don't know. I thought it was going to get right under it. He just about played that into a bad hop. You saw Billy lay back, and then all of a sudden, I think he glanced up, and he realized the speed of Robin Yount, and all of a sudden, he comes in and plays it on the in-between hop. But he stays with it and throws him out. That was a good statement by Lopes. He's all man. He's got a sense of humor about himself. Yount, incidentally, has 13 home runs. I guess you were curious. I didn't get around to that. Willie Randolph now, up for the third time, fouls it off. Over to the left side where Reach picks it up. Willie has grounded out to the second baseman and singled, then was picked off. Which was the ignominious play of the game thus far. All you children who did not understand that word, <laughs> write it down and ask your teacher. What's that? <laughs> One and one again. <laughs> Willie looks at a breaking pitch high. Up the middle for the shortstop, Russell. And Billy gets Willie. Two down, and the playing surface now is almost totally covered by shadow. The right fielder, however, is still going to be looking up through some shafts of sun. 
He's just about totally shadows now. As you look at that gray infield, Keith, and you brought that up a little while ago as we pan around Dodger Stadium, you talked about the Dodgers changing their infield. They used a lot of crushed brick, the dust out here that they had before, and it just got too hard in the summertime, and the players really complained about it. Rod Carew fouls it away to the left side. So they've gone to the gray dirt, and the mixture is much keener for the players, and they like it a lot more. Came from your hometown, huh? That's Van Dyke. That Van Dyke. Loop to right, base hit. Carew is on for a third successive time, a double and a single and a walk. What a beautiful player. And you're right, you mentioned his hands earlier. He's got the hands of a lighter weight classification fighter. Eh? Beautiful. <laughs> he may have taught Roberto Duran. By the way, America will see that fight July 19th on ABC. Duran against Leonard. From Panama. That's right, they are. Man. They are. Freddie Lynn struck out swinging, rolled out to the second baseman. Peru stole a base, he walked in the first inning, and stole second. Got a huge lead off Richard. There's a strike, inside corner, letters. That is one and one, two out. Reggie on deck. Something's going to explode in this game. Can't yep. get that feeling. I suspect that Bob Welch would like very much to get Fred Lynn, <laughs> not have to go through the Reggie Jackson <laughs> confrontation again here. Just missed. He had Reggie, 0 and 2, wound up walking. Big swing. 2 and 2. Dave Winfield in right field and George Hendrick in center. Ken Griffey in left. The out of defense for the National League. Three and two. Crowd starting to buzz now. They can see big 44 out in the on deck circle. Crew goes. Lynn hits it high down the right side if it's fair it's gone it's in the seats home run American leads two to nothing you could sense that something was going to happen and the explosion came hamstring or no hamstring Freddie Lynn did the job Freddie Lynn, six years in the American League, six times an All-Star. Two of three All-Star hits were home runs last year off Steve Carlton. Ellie hooks that ball just down the line. It was trying to hook foul, but he got it right down the line past that 330 marker. So he got one off Welch this year, one off Steve last year. Jackson must be a little irritated with his pension for drama. Yep. Lynn took it all away from him. Stole his thunder. Welch. As Jackson hitting a high pop back of the plate. Freddie Lynn, I tell you, when you consider who he's hit the home runs off of now, he got one off Steve Carlton, he got one off Tom Seaver, and now one off Bob Welch. And playing with a very sore hamstring tear. One and one for Reggie. That's foul. So the American League jumps out on top here in the top of the fifth inning. Two to nothing on the home run by Lynn. One-two pitch to Jackson. Hit on the ground and Garner can't reach it. And Reggie's aboard with a single. Royce has been warming up in the bullpen for the National League. See all of that haze and smoke that blew out of downtown now. <laughs> and now working for the Chamber of Commerce. Eh? 
No, not really. It is pretty. Ben Ogilvy, swing and a miss for strike one. Lights are on now all the way around the stadium. It's just high. One and one with two out. Reggie aboard at first base. But the American League has a lead of two to nothing on Fred Lynn's home run. Daryl Porter is moved to the on-deck circle, swinging a bat. The catcher from the Kansas City Royals, Ogilvy, is swinging a miss to make it one and two. And there's Daryl. He stayed home in Kansas City yesterday, came late to do some work with a youngster who's having an alcoholism problem. Reggie Jackson now is leaving the base pass and going out to run for him Ken Landro of the Minnesota Twins, who is truly a bright young star on the horizon for baseball. Only hitting 31 straight games earlier this year. Ogilvy, oh, flag down by Garvey. Great play by Steve to end the inning. So Steve Garvey comes up with a great defensive play to end the inning, but it's a big inning for the American League as they take a two to nothing lead, but look at that. Garvey flagged it down using every inch of his glove. Two nothing American League, Al Michaels will be along in just a moment to call the play by play the rest of the way. As we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, six changes for the American League. Al Oliver is now in left. Al Bunbury will be in center. And Ken Landro went in to run for Reggie Jackson, is in right. And as Steve Garvey gets set to lead off in the bottom of the fifth inning, the other defensive changes, you have Cecil Cooper of the Milwaukee Brewers taking over at first base, Darrell Porter of Kansas City, spelling Fisk back of the plate. And the new third baseman taking the spot of Greg Nettles is Buddy Bell of the Texas Rangers. It's a lot of change. It's mm. interesting to conjure about Weaver's strategy here. Steve Garvey tries to bunt his way on against his ex-mate Tommy John. 0-1. So the American League on top. Freddie Lynn, the two-run homer in the fifth inning. The National League has been totally silent. Without a hit, without a base runner. One and one. Weaver has diminished his outfield power, but improved his outfield defense. 2-0 the count. Earl working with the lead. And, of course, he was the last American League manager at the helm the last time the Americans defeated the Nationals back in 71. Bell, short hops, and gets him. So one down and 13 straight National Leaguers have gone down. A reminder coming up Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports, WBC World Super Welterweight Championship, Morris Hope against Rocky Mattioli, live from London. And it's quite a week for you, Mr. Cosell, from Bloomington to Los Angeles to England. Time permitting, National Championship Sprint Car Racing from Terre Haute this Saturday. That's your time. <laughs> yeah, right. You go to London and I go to Terre Haute. <laughs> Stearns at the plate. So the Met facing the Yankee as Stearns bats for the first time in the game. Taking over for Johnny Bench, who caught the first three innings. In the dirt and away from Porter. Stearns involved in the incident the other night with Bill Gullickson, the Montreal pitcher, coming off the bench Friday in New York. Two and one the count. A lot of bad blood between those two teams, the Expos and the Mets, right now. They had a couple of set twos. Craig Swan had some pointed remarks to make about Dick Williams two days ago. Bounce toward the middle. Randolph is there, backhands, and throws him out. And that's 14 straight between Stone and John. Two down in the fifth inning. And we'll take our first look at Ken Griffey. I don't think you can make enough, Don, about 
the conditions, the twilight over the years, very low scoring games. You're never going to see a slugfest when you play this time of day in L.A. and tonight running true to form. Well, that's very true, Al. And I think number two is, I said at the top of the show, is that good pitching will stop good hitting. And that's what we've seen so far here tonight. Bob Wells got the one pitch, a 3-2 pitch up to Freddie Lynn. I think Freddie Lynn's looking fastball all the way, and he just wrote it right on out of here. But we've seen some excellent pitching so far. But that was an interesting graphic you just saw. Griffey's career record against Tommy John, hitting better than 400. The strike one pitch to Ken. Fly ball to deep right center field. Al Bumbrey going all the way back. He's hit it out. Say what I mean. He still owns Tommy John. So the National League gets its first base runner, its first hit, and a run. It's two to one. That ball was hit well. Al Bumbrey was shading just a little bit into left center field, and Griffey got it all. There was no question about that when it left the bat. Tommy John, as soon as he threw it, he was looking for a new ball. Can reach the batter. One and oh the count. Reach 0 for 1. The Cardinal third baseman bounced out in the third inning. One and one. Briskly played ball game. An all-star game with all the substitutions. Randolph will handle this one. Maybe not. Reach a slow runner and then Willie throws it away. Kenny is on his way to second, but Porter backs up the play, throws down to Yount, and they nail him. So Reach turned and didn't see Porter backing up alertly and throwing him out at second as we take another look at the home run by Ken Griffey. Low fastball. He got it all. As I said before, Bumbrey chasing it to the wall. He just runs out of room. So at the end of five, Americans two, Nationals one. Back with more of the 1980 All-Star Game after this word from our local station. Well, there's a look at that last play. The ball actually kind of handcuffed Willie Randolph. He ran it into a short hop. It bounced off his leg. Then he had time to still get him, but he threw it down in the dirt by Cooper. But here's a great heads-up play by Daryl Porter. He's there to keep it from going in the dugout. A nice little one hopper to Robin Yount says, come on, all I got to do is make the tag, and they get him by 20 feet. In the sixth inning now, it's Ray Knight of the Cincinnati Reds who takes over at third. Can he reach his spot? And the new pitcher, another Dodger. After we saw Welch, we now see Jerry Royce, who, of course, pitched the only no-hitter in the majors this season a week ago Friday against the Giants at Candlestick Park and were it not for a throwing error by Bill Russell it would have been a perfect game. Sixth inning American League two National League one and Darrell Porter comes up for the first time in the game who made the alert play backing up looks at a strike going one. This might have been the last place Darrell Porter thought he would be, Howard, in late March and early April in the All-Star game. Remarkable story, too. In the vogue, perhaps, of Bob Welch. His rehabilitation. Men coping with life's problems and finally coping successfully. The highest kind of courage. Porter fouling it away, and so the count holds at 0-2. Jerry Royce, reborn in a way. Yep. Sent to the bullpen, back in the rotation now. A swing, and down he goes. So Porter strikes out. Freddie Lynn downstairs with Bob Euchre. Bob? Thank you very much, Al. Just a moment ago, a two-run homer for Fred Lynn in all-star game number six, and they get bigger each year, don't they, Freddie? That's uh, certainly true, Bob. Uh, it sure gets tougher to hit in these games. Uh, guys are getting tougher every year, but uh, I enjoy coming. You got a slight hamstring pull. What's the story? Well, it's bothered me a little bit. Uh, I was kind of questionable before this game, but since the van fans voted me in, I felt kind of obligated to get out there and play. Back up to you. All right, Uke, as Buddy Bell stands in, 0-1 oh, the count on the Texas third baseman. Since the fans voted me in, I felt obligated to play. That's what you like to hear, Howard. Mm-hmm. One and two the count. There's Joe Lasorda, Tom's wife. 
You know one thing, she's a great cook. <laughs> I know one thing. She could have made a better marriage. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Tommy. Down goes Bell to Jerry Royce. And struck out Porter and Bell. Quickly, two gone in the sixth inning. And Tommy John will bat for himself. Jim Rice and Reggie Jackson. Rice, of course, unable to play because of the injury. Reggie coming out in the fifth inning. So TJ. In his second All-Star game, fouls it back. 0-1 the count. Tommy, interestingly enough, has not been in an All-Star game since 1968, even though he was named to the teams the last two seasons. 0-2. How about that for a triumvirate? Brett sidelined with an injury, a hitter in the manner of Rod Carew, Jim Rice, and Reggie Jackson. How'd you like to start a new franchise with those three? Mm. They are a franchise. Look <laughs> at it, three four and five half swing and down goes John and Jerry Royce makes it look easy as he strikes the side out in the sixth inning so at the end of five and a half it's still two to one American League Roger Stadium the 51st All-Star game still in the twilight the lights really have not taken effect as yet the American League on top two to one two run homer by Freddie Lynn in the fifth Ken Griffey countered with a bases empty shot in the bottom of the fifth and we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Well, in the middle of the picture, a once young gentleman who grows increasingly handsome, Elton Rule, the president of the American Broadcasting Company. Right behind him, Jim Spence, our senior vice president of ABC Sports. Got to look at these men closely in the nature of our business. One is in permanent job imperilment. <laughs> Bill Russell, look at this right. Oh, and what? <laughs> Little tapper hit back to Tommy. And he throws down his ex mate. So Russell is gone. One down. Third in the sixth inning. For the Cincinnati Reds. And Ray Knight is the batter. Knight. Hitting for the first time in the game and batting in the number nine spot. When Royce came in, they put Jerry in the seventh spot in the order. Ray Knight, the story well chronicled. Sat on the bench for a while at Cincinnati. Of course, Pete Rose was ahead of him. Rose goes to Philadelphia. Knight responds with a tremendous year in 79. And again in 80, batting 289. 0 and 1. Grounded to the hole and through in the left field for a base hit. So both National League hits belong to the Cincinnati Reds. The homer by Griffey, and now the single by Knight. Ray at first base. One down. And Phil Garner. He's been a up. remarkable player, Al Knight. Taking over as he had to. The position vacated by Pete Rose. Answering to the pressure immediately. Having a fine season, and this year having another one. Knight at first base as Garner fouls it away. 0-1. Incidentally, when you was talking with Johnny, he didn't have a chance to congratulate Johnny, his parents, Teddy and Kate Bench, their 40th anniversary tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we will take that opportunity now, John. 1-1. One one. Probably celebrating in finger. There he is. JB. John with a token throw over. This is American League umpire down the right field foul line. His name is Rich Garcia. More on that in a moment. It sharply Randolph can't backhand. It goes through. Knight will stop at second. Al Bumbry getting it back in. So the National League with runners at first and second, one away. And George Hendrick of the St. Louis Cardinals coming up for the first time. And Earl Weaver of the Baltimore Orioles making his way to the mound to talk to Tommy John. 
Well, you talked about players and you talked about Freddie Lynn, Howard. We heard him say that he felt he was obligated to come, that the fans had voted for him. And, of course, I think another kind of touching story, the umpire down the right field line, Rich Garcia, has had some, some problems in his family with his young daughter. Well, his daughter, Dina, underwent surgery, curvature of the spine. She's just out of intensive care and recovering. And it hasn't been that easy for Rich Garcia to carry through with his duties. But we're happy to learn it's turning out so well. Mm -hmm. So another fellow, Don, has had some problems. Lee Wire himself physically. That's right. I saw Lee here in the press box prior to coming up into the booth tonight. And he said he hopes that he's going to be back pretty soon. We certainly hope so. In the meantime, the National League is getting to Tommy John. George Hendrick rips it into right center for a base hit. Maybe two. Ray Knight comes in to score. Garner will go to third. It's a long single, and the game is tied. Watch this swing by George Hendricks. Here's what makes him such a good hitter. That ball down and away, he just goes right with it. A good shot up the alley right center field. Knight coming in to score all the way. Garner very heads up as he ends up at third. Here comes Earl Weaver, and that could be all for Tommy John, it will be all. Stephen Farmer throwing out. So Weaver on his way out to make the change. The American League Two, the National League Two in the bottom of the sixth. We'll be right back. The reason the White Sox have enjoyed good success thus far this season would be that man who's been instrumental in 23 victories. He's won six himself and saved 17. The big right-hander Ed Farmer coming on in the bottom of the sixth inning. The move made by Earl Weaver, who has made a lot of moves tonight and a lot of moves that might be second-guessed. That's true. I remarked when he put in that bevy of substitutions earlier that he was diminishing his power, especially in the outfield. Now he's got Jackson out of the game, Lynn out of the game, Rice sidelined with the injury, and he's got all those lefties in there against Royce. Well... I think every all-star manager will tell you, you can't please them all. You can either play to win with your best or try to get everybody in. There's a man who's become an institution in Los Angeles. The peanut vendor. Yep, famous From guy. All angles. <laughs> On the other side of the coin, going back to Don's pregame talk with Weaver, he made it clear he wanted to get everybody in. So this may be his whole purpose. Mm -hmm. You'd love to get everybody in, and you'd also love to win. Somewhere along the line, why things just might turn out that way, or might not turn out that way, I should say. And right now, why the American League lead is tied, and it's in jeopardy. Runners at first and third, one out, and Dave Winfield pops it up in foul ground. And it will land and bounce in the dugout. 0-1 oh, the count. Bill Garner, the go-ahead run is at third. And there's George Hendrick, who drove in the tying run at first, held aboard by Cooper. 2-2 tie in the bottom of the sixth inning. Infield double play depth. Oh and two. I think Ed Farmer falls into that same category that we've talked about with Rich Gossage. Of course, Farmer with the White Sox and their pitching coach Ron Schuler has said that first of all, they're using him now only like in the eighth and ninth innings if they can just keep it right there. But for the first time, he's been a leader and he's not necessarily a follower anymore. He's been around. It's an interesting story with Ed Farmer. Been in professional baseball since 1967. Nondescript career, really. And this year, everything perfect. Bouncer, Randolph can't handle it. Gets away from Willie. Everybody is safe. And the Nationals have the lead. That ball hit out on the end of the bat. It was hit hard. It short hopped Randolph. Willie, you see him make that play many times, but it just came up on him, and when he ran it down, he had no chance whatsoever. There it is again. That ball slicing a little bit, comes off the glove, and by the time he does retrieve it, they get nobody. National League on top, 3-2. Ran a difficult game for Willie. They give him an error on that one. They gave him the error before when he threw it by Cooper as Keith Hernandez bats for Steve Garvey. And look to the strike. His teammate, Hendrick, at second. Dave Winfield, board at first. 
Hernandez hitting 323, co MVP with Stargell last year and the batting champion. One and one. Ed Farmer, 6'5, 210 pounder. Mm. One and two. Boy, he's got a nice swing. He's beautiful. National League batting leaders, of course, Reggie Smith started. Templeton is not here. If he's not starting, he's not departing, according to Gary. Cromart, he's not here either. But Hernandez at the plate right now, tied for third. Two and two. Well, it's Farmer involved in that incident with Al Cowens and the law courts now involved. Foul to the plate. You're hearing about that one, I think, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Of course, Farmer last year hit Cowens with a pitch, sent Al to the hospital. Next time he faced him, Cowens now, of course, with Detroit. Easy ground ball, and instead of running the first base, ran right at the farmer. Suspended for seven days. And the criminal complaint subsequently filed. 2-2 Two -two pitch, shot back off farmer, and Yount will have to hold it as everybody is safe to load him up. Hernandez, sharply back through the middle. Farmer just getting a piece of it. And keep this aboard and happy. That ball was hit hard. Howard, you talked about injuries in all-star games, and here could have been one here. Look at that ball. A line shot, and he just did get a glove on it. Now, Robin Yount's going over by the bag at second base. Has to stop, reverses direction. All he can do is eat it and hold the runners right where they're at. Bases Base loaded, still 3-2 National League. Only one out. The National League with Pete Rose coming up in a position to break the game open for the American League. At the moment, at least, a continuation of the disconcerting trend of so many years. Pete Rose batting for Stearns. The base is loaded. Taking high. One and that's a moment to remember just there. That's the first time I've ever heard Pete Rose cheered in Dodger <laughs> Stadium. That's a first. Infield up at first and third. Double play at short and second. As Rose hits a bouncer down to Randolph. Willie over to Yount. One and back to first. Double play. So Rose hits into a double play to end it. But here in the sixth inning, the National League comes up with a couple of runs. Four hits. This ball hit off One the out. end of the bat, and Willie Randolph made a fine play. That ball wasn't hit that hard. He has to charge in front of the runner. Just backhanded flip to Yount, but Robbins got an excellent arm. Look at that, flat-footed, and they just get Rose to double him at first. So after six complete innings of play, the National League on top, three to two. All right, let's go to Howard. All right, I am with the gentleman who is the president of the Los Angeles Olympic Organizing Committee, Mr. Peter Oberoff. Very quickly, Peter, you go to Moscow shortly, and there you will recommend one, maybe two, demonstration games for the Olympics, which allows such. What would you be recommending? Well, Howard, we'll recommend baseball right here in this stadium to be part of the 1984 Olympic Games. And the other would be tennis. Tennis is a possibility, too. Now, will there be any change with regard to the uh, flag closing ceremonies? Have you tried to change President Carter's mind? We've tried to change his mind because we think that in that one instance, it's an Olympic ceremony. It'll signal to all the people in the free world that the Olympics are coming here. We're going to put them back on track again, and we're going to be proud of the games here in L.A. But he is not changing. He's not changed his mind as of this date. Finally, will this Olympiad in 84 cost the taxpayers of the United States any money? Not a penny. This is the first time it's going to be handled totally in the private sector. And we'll also recommend in Moscow that all future games be handled by the private sector in every country to avoid the politics. If you can make that work, sir, you've executed a miracle. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Hard. Thank you. Okay, back to Al. Well, new picture for the National League as Jim Bibby having a sensational year. Look at those marks. 11 and 1, including the victory in the 20 inning game the other day when he came out of the bullpen Sunday to beat the Cubs in Pittsburgh. He takes over as we go to the seventh inning, the National League on top. 
three to two. Trying to continue the domination and make it nine straight as Robin Yount leads off in the seventh. One and oh. Keith Hernandez staying in the game. He's at first base and Dave Concepcion. There he is. The new shortstop. And the new catcher is Gary Carter from the Expos. Two and oh the count. Gary Carter, third man back of the plate for the Nationals tonight. Bench starting. Stearns in there for three. And now Carter. Hits a right field. Winfield fades. Dave has room. One down. One out and Willie Randolph coming up. Bibby's been around. We talked about Farmer and how long Ed has pitched in pro ball since 67. Bibby, an up and down career, having a great season in 80. Jim's been around and this is his first All-Star game. Jim found himself the second half of last season. Proved himself in the World Series. Did a magnificent job as Randolph rips it into right center field. That's his second hit. Hendrick gets it back in. So Willie tonight with two hits and two errors in the American League with a total of seven hits in the seventh inning. As Cecil Cooper comes up. The one error that doesn't register was the pickoff at first. Mm -hmm. That probably killed a big inning for the American League. An eventful night for the Yankee second baseman with good speed as he takes his lead at first. And Cecil Cooper coming up. Good to see the Brewers getting some attention. It's a team that has excited a lot of people, and we don't have to tell anybody in Wisconsin. But as far as national acclaim and publicity, relatively unknown. Well, that's so true. And you've got to believe that the Yankees just fall there a little bit, and Milwaukee can continue to play their steady ball if their pitching just gets a little maybe a little sounder it's going to be a dog fight it's not over by far well you're touching on the very valid point that Ben Ogilvy made in that piece we had at the beginning of the telecast when interrogated by Keith and Al yesterday he said he thought the players should select the all-stars because the Milwaukee market gets outvoted by the Los Angeles and New York markets. There's a bouncer to short. Concepcion shovels to Garner. Back over to Hernandez. Double play. In the seventh, no runs, a hit. Nobody left after six and a half. National three and the Americans two. As you look at Mrs. Bibby. Gentlemen, again we draw your attention to the commissioner's box. And baseball welcomes the Attorney General of the United States the Honorable Benjamin Civiletti. <laughs> He's a great lawyer. Hope I get done in time to make a pit Your stop. Now pitching. We're at the party. Where is the tent? It's right in behind here. New pitcher for the Blue Jays. Or for the American League from the Blue Jays. We'll take a look at Dave Steve, the only Toronto representative on the team. Good looking young pitcher. And another change for the Americans at second is Bobby Gritch of the California Angels. Takes over for Willie Randolph there. Steve's another remarkable story, Al, as you know. Inverted outfield. Well, was playing, an out, playing the outfield a couple of years ago. Now look at him. Pitching in the All Star game. As Ken Griffey stands in, Griffey had the National League's first hit, home run in the fifth. On one, the count. By the way, a lot made of the selections, of course, and we've been touching on that. Every team has to have at least one representative. And Steve here for Toronto as Griffey loops it into right field, and Ken is two for two. Landro getting it back in. So this Ken is Griffey. Griffey.
Third. Mike Griffin. Dave Concepcion. Her man with a couple of hits is Dave Concepcion comes up. So Griffey a couple of hits tonight and he's three for three in overall all-star appearances. Concepcion batting for the first time in the game. Chuck Tanner. <laughs> Pirates winning it all last year so the manager from the previous year's pennant winner Weaver and Tanner runner goes as Concepcion fouls it away one and two the count Al, I think one of the big keys about Steve this year is that he's kind of developed this curveball and his changeup. He's got some pitches to go with that fastball. He's a comer, and right now he's in his first All-Star game. Bouncing ball down to Gritch. The out one. Robin back to first. Not in time there. Concepcion. Legging it aboard safely as you look at Delia Concepcion. Davy reaching first on the force at second. So Dave Concepcion aboard. Here's Bill Burton, the Houston Astro manager. First base coach tonight is Gary Carter. Comes up. That'll be one of the few times that Burton will pat Concepcion on the <laughs> seat of the pants. You pat. <laughs> A lot of strange sights that you'll only see in an All-Star game. That's right. They go back to war in another couple of days. Mm -hmm. Steve driving Concepcion back and Cooper making a nice play. He showed you a good move. Too. He sure did. He whipped that ball over too. It's close in that look. Bottom of the seventh. Nationals ahead three to two again. A quick move to first and Concepcion going back in standing up. Davey can't get too far off there. He has just got back under those tags. Boy what an asset that is for a pitcher to have a good pickoff move and have confidence in it. Another asset for Steve in this particular situation is I'm sure Concepcion has not seen him before. That one gets away from Porter and Concepcion will advance to second. So that's one way to get down there on the wild pitch. Here's a tough pitch for a catcher to handle. That breaking pitch down in the dirt, you try and get there and block it. You see that Darrell kind of lifted his head just a little bit and then that's all that happened the ball just got by him and Concepcion's at second base one out of the seventh one out of Carter grounded fair and fielded by Bell whose strong throw gets him and Concepcion remains at second all right a visit with Tommy John now let's go to Bob Uecker a rough outing uh, coming back to Los Angeles TJ well I had I had fairly good stuff but uh, you know a lot of times when you get out there like that you tend to throw a little harder than what your game speed is and you know you get hyped up psyched up and um, I was throwing some nice straight fastballs down around the knees and uh, uh, one bad hop there on uh, Garner's ball and uh, we could have been out of it but uh, uh, I've been hit harder. <laughs> Back up to you Al. All right Uke as Ray Knight checks his swing taking the pitch one and know the count with two down. Concepcion at second bottom of the seventh three two national. I thought Tommy was a touch nonchalant. Do it on the count. I think that's probably the one thing for any department in this game of baseball, and it'll happen to the pitchers. You get in a all-star game in front of a sellout crowd all the time, and sometimes you do. You get trying to throw a little bit harder than you actually should. Inside ball three. That's an excuse you'll sometimes hear too in championship series competition and certainly in the World Series. That's right. 
especially all-star games and World Series. If you don't, if you can't get up for these, Al, why, I don't know. I, get, I don't think you, just, you can't get up for anything. I'll tell you, one fellow I hope gets in tonight is Alan Trammell of Detroit. I do, Boy, too. was he excited. Mm. That one is ball four. Gets away from Porter. Concepcion will go to third. Take a wide turn there and then hold. Johnny McNamara, you can see where he was down that third base line. John was an excellent third base coach when he was over with the California Angels. And we'll look at this pitch again. That ball just sinks. And that actually handcuffs Porter. That ball really sunk. And now Darrell has to get on it in a hurry. Here comes Concepcion around. Now you don't even see McNamara. He is way down the line. He's letting Concepcion come as far as he can and says, that's all. Hold it right there, pal. Good work by Johnny mm -hmm. McNamara. Porter charged with a pass ball. So runners at first and third, two down. Bill Garner takes outside. <laughs> Porter having a tough night. Darrell saying, man, I haven't <laughs> caught many sinker ballers like this, maybe. Steve has got good action on his fastball. You can see that last. Darrell, it just hit him on the top of the glove. It never got him on the front part of the glove. One and oh on Garner. Good breaking ball. But you know what's funny? Take an all-star catcher like Daryl Porter. You look at Concepcion at third and over at first, Ray Knight. Give them another inning. That's all they need. Don't handle them like they've been catching them all their life. Swing and a miss. One and two on the Pirates' second baseman. He keeps it down, I'll tell you. Keep that breaking pitch down there and that sinker down there, and you're going to win some ball games. Steve, right now, record of seven and six. I don't know whether that's indicative of the kind of pitching that he has done all year long. A good ERA of 3.10. Knight goes. Garner takes inside. The throw goes through, and then Gritch goes back to third, but Davey is back in safely as Knight is in at second. That was a heads-up play by Bobby Gritch. They didn't have too much of a chance to get Knight. Bobby just came up in front of the bag to cut off the throw as we look at it one more time. And he's hoping that Concepcion is going to come down a little bit into no man's land where they can get him. But they can't. Davey just bluffed a little bit and got back under the tag. The count on Garner is two and two. And this one gets away from Porter. Another run will score. Concepcion throws the plate to make it four to two as Knight advances to third. So Steve has good stuff tonight, but too good for Porter. Now this appears to be a breaking pitch down and away. Darrell's got his glove turned the wrong way. And now all he's got to do is try and run it down. You know that Concepcion's going to score. He's got to try and hold Knight at third. 4-2. National League. Tom Bergmeyer of the Red Sox in the bullpen. 3-2 pitch. He walks him. So Steve walking Knight and Garner back to back after the American League pitchers had not yielded a walk to this point. And George Hendrick of the Cardinals comes up. Figure out how would you like to have Hendrick, Dave Kingman, and Steve Carlton win co-MVP? That'd be some press conference, wouldn't it? I don't think you'd have any. <laughs> <laughs> they send Garner, pitches outside, the throw going through, not in time as Knight holds the third. Bobby Gritch arguing just a little bit with the second base umpire Nick Colosi. Bobby trying to convince Colosi that he got him up in front of the bag before he reached the full impact of his slide. Clearly safe. Tagged him late. He's there. Good call by Nick. National League pulling out its tricks. Foul away. One and one. <laughs> you know how far out in front he was of that mm. pitch? He hit that ball pretty good and hooked it yep. back up over the dugout. Look around Dodger Stadium. 
Hard to believe it opened in 62. The place is still immaculate. Two and one to count. Joining Bergmeier, there's the goose. Rich Gossage of the Yankees, the right-handed. Line to center field, but Bunbury is there and makes the catch. The inning is over. They pick up another run. And at the end of seven, National League leading for two. Back with more of the All-Star game after this word from our local stations. Well, there it is up on the new Diamond Vision board at Dodger Stadium, 56,088. And as we look down from the helicopter, the largest crowd to ever watch a game in Dodger Stadium. And what a beautiful shot. It's a gorgeous ballpark, Don. Of course, you played here so many years. They do a marvelous job year-round. Bruce Souter in the pitch, the winning pitcher in each of the last two All-Star games. will try to get the save in this one as he comes in in the eighth inning. And the other change for the National League, the sole representative from Atlanta, Dale Murphy, now in center. Well, Tim is getting all his people in, and yet, seems to me he's handled his personnel very effectively. Al Bumbrey, the batter. One no. The only man that's not in the lineup or has played is Jose Cruz of the Houston Astros. So he's got one more regular on the bench. One and one. Chuck's going to come out smelling like roses if he wins the game and gets everybody in. That's the ideal trick. Yep. Pretty tough to pull off. One and two. We say everybody in, everybody outside of some pitchers, of course. Steve Carlton worked on Sunday. Ground ball to Garner. One away. From the Minnesota Twins, right fielder. And the welcome Ken up on the new board. We thank you. That last inning became suddenly untidy for an all-star game. Porter having all that trouble with Steve. But on balance, it's been an interesting game. Now, they face the American League the same dilemma. Kenny Landro fouling it away, 0-1. This is Kenny Landro. He had three triples the other day. I asked him why not four. He said, I didn't get up the fourth time. He's got that kind <laughs> of confidence. <laughs> After his 31-game streak was snapped, he said, I'll just start another one. Oh, and to the count. He thought he should have been traded straight up for Taru. One and two. National League leading four to two in the eighth inning. After the American League had jumped out to a two nothing lead, the homer by Freddie Lynn in the fifth. Ken Griffey homering in the bottom of the fifth. The Nationals adding two in the sixth. And one in the seventh. One two pitch is hit foul outside first. Al Oliver will be up next. You won two All-Star games in a row, didn't you, Don? Yeah. Uh, one at Anaheim, and I think the next year it was at Houston. You're the only one besides Suda. And that graphic was interesting on Landa. The right field and into the corner, but Dave Winfield gauges it perfectly to make the catch. So Landro becomes out number two as we see it again. Look he got that the ball camp. out on the end of the bat, Howard, and he hooks it down the line with those big, long, loping strides of Dave Winfield. He gets over there, and he makes the play with ease. As most sports fans know, Winfield was the most versatile athlete at the University of Minnesota. Could have played professional basketball. And that uh, elongated grace that you just saw is the evidence of his athletic ability. Al Oliver of the Texas Rangers. 
Texas swing and it's outside. Well, this guy's done it in both leagues, he Al. Hit third in the American League and runs batted in with 58. Per Perez first, Hebner second. Interestingly, neither man is on the American League All-Star team. Tony or Richard. I think you would just have to classify Al Oliver as a pure hitter. Mm -hmm. Full count. Did it for many years, of course, with the Pirates. Full count. Garner will handle this one. And Bruce Suter has a 1 2 3 inning. The Americans got in order. After seven and a half, the score remains the National League four and the American League two. Four American League two, bottom of the eighth inning upcoming. And right now, let's take a five second pause to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is WXYZ TV, Channel 7, Detroit. Changes for the American League. New pitcher, the Goose, coming in. Rich Gossage. Three wins and 13 saves. And pot of late from the New York Yankees. There is the sole representative from the Oakland A's, Ricky Henderson. Good young outfielder. One of three possessed by Oakland. And there's our man, Alan Trammell, maybe the most excited of all the players to be in his first All-Star game from the Tigers taking over at shortstop. As he put it today at a luncheon, this would have been my senior year in college. That's right. And another change, his teammate, Lance Parrish, takes over for Porter, back of the plate. Attention, please. Now pitching. Dave Winfield, the New York Yankees. reaching on an error in the sixth inning in his only previous at-bat, coming up in the bottom of the eighth. National League on top, four to two. Right after the game, they'll announce, as they annually do, the most valuable player is you take a look at former President Ford, Commissioner Bowie Kuhn. And earlier, we met the Attorney General of the United States, General Ben Civiletti. Dave Winfield of the San Diego Padres facing Goose Gossage. Bottom of the eighth inning. Slow number foul. Oh, and one. It'll be interesting to see who the MVP is. Well, the guy that drove in the go-ahead run has been George Henry. But Ken Griffey was the guy who ignited the ball everything. club. Steve Stone was perfect, but his team's losing. It is going to be interesting. Hit to right field. Landro coming on and makes the play. Kenny Landro, the Minnesota Twins. Got a good jump on it and makes the catch for the out. One down. Well, Kenny Landro is used to these Southern California skies. He's from right here in L.A. That ball is a tough play because it's slicing away from him, but Kenny, an excellent outfielder, makes a fine play. Well, you look at it again. That ball moving away from Landro. Got an excellent jump. Out number one. Keith Hernandez of the Cardinals takes a strike. Well, his father taught him to hit. Did some job. 0 oh and 2 from the Bay Area. He and Kenny Reese, both from the San Francisco Bay Area. First and third with the Cardinals. Part of a pretty good offensive machine. That still gives him batting tips occasionally when he gets into a slump, which is not very often. Two and one. Sun setting over the mountains. Just beautiful. Three and one. Now you see a panoramic view. Hernandez strokes it down the line and left foot foul. Two and two the count. 
He's beautiful the way he hits it where it's pitched, you know, Don? I haven't really seen that much of Hernandez, just a little bit. But what I have seen, you've got to be impressed with the young man. And I'm sure that if you played with him and watch him every day, why, well, you're really impressed. To left, Henderson moving in and makes a did he know? Jerry Dale out there to make the call. He had him called out, Al, if he holds on to it. But I think his impact, why it rolled out of his glove. Excellent try by Henderson. That ball slicing and dying on him. He gets the glove on it. Little short hop. Yep. And there it rolls out. And they give him a base hit. So Hernandez is two for two. And Dale Murphy of the Braves. His first trip to the plate. Interesting the way the Braves have come alive. Even as the Mets have in the National League pennant races. After that horrendous start. A few clubs that have come alive. This kid is fifth in home runs in the National League with 16. All you have to do is ask the Houston pitching staff about Atlanta. In a series the Braves had offensively against the Astros. To deep left field. Henderson going back into the corner, and it's foul. So Murphy with a distance, but it hooked. And then it's one and two. The goose is mm. saying thank you. Mm. He got a breaking pitch up over the plate. And the National League just about put it out of sight. That's an interesting graphic. Hasn't allowed a home run to a right-handed hitter this season. He came close. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. One away in the eighth. Two and two now on Murphy. Ball rolling around behind home plate on Parrish. But I got news from Mr. Hernandez at first base. You better get about halfway there because Parrish has a gun. He's got a howitzer. Murphy, a number up the third baseline, kicking foul, and the count holds at two and two. Once That's again, it's Bergmeier. Tom in the American League pen. Tell you that last Monday night game, the Yankees against the Red Sox, when Gossage threw his heat. Wow. <laughs> That's Tony right. Perez never saw that last strike to end the game. 2-2 two -two pitch, little squibber off the end of the bat. Cooper looks at second and then makes the play himself at first for the out. And Hernandez advances to second. So two down. Tonight, immediately following your late local news, ABC News Nightline. Ted Topo examines the crisis in the American auto industry, featuring reports about President Carter's day. Activities in Detroit and Tokyo, the two leading automotive centers in the world. That's tonight on Nightline. Ken Griffey with a home run and a single, a base hit here, and Ken might put away that MVP trophy. But he gets a fly ball to center field, and it's an easy play for Al Bumbry. And that's that in the eighth. No runs, one hit, leave one. The Americans coming up in the ninth. The Nationals trying to make it nine straight, leading 4-2. Angeles Basin, sun setting, Dodger Stadium. The focal point as we go to the ninth inning, 4-2 National League, and Ricky Henderson of the A's takes outside. One and all. Oh. Ricky Henderson, part of a good young outfield with Dwayne Murphy and Tony Armas, looks at a strike. One and one. Buddy Bell waiting on deck. So the American League winless in 71 and trailing 4-2 in the ninth inning facing Bruce Souter of the Cubs. Bouncer fielded in fair territory by Knight and Ray guns him down. One away. This has to be pretty bitter for the American League.
Buddy Bell coming up. McPhail's going to owe Feeney another drink the way things are going. The two league presidents. A strike. 0 and 1. Half swing. Grounder foul. And the count, nothing in two. Bobby Gritch on deck. Bruce Suter. Winner in 78, winner in 79, and trying to be the saver in 80. Jerry Royce, the pitcher of record for the National League. Tommy John for the American. Going through the count. I don't know whether that's California or Texas. Nah, that's California. Or Colorado. Where the hats have become a major factor. Round it short. Concepcion. Able to get him with some help from Hernandez. So two away in the ninth inning. Suter has retired the five men he has faced, making it look easy as Bobby Gritch comes up to try to keep it alive. And if he can, we would see Lance Parrish next. Interesting to come down to the final inning and find you've got Henderson, Bell, and Gritch. Well, both managers, excuse me, Al, have used their rosters as well as they guess they figured they could. They've got order left for the American League and Jose Cruz for the National League of the regulars. Ball three. Three and oh on Grit. Skyline has a golden tinge now. And so has the National League. Ball four. So the Americans are still alive as Grit walks with two down in the ninth inning. And Lance Parrish of the Tigers comes up for the first time. Well, he's got the power. 11 homers, 47 ribbies. But facing a very tough man to hit one out against. He and does get you to hit it down, does he? Want to know. You look for a little key, maybe a little edge to perish. It might help him along the line, but you really can't figure it as far as spring training would be concerned. You're starting in two different leagues to start with. The Tigers train in Lakeland, Florida, and the, the Cubs are over in Arizona. One and one the count. Suter trying to put this one away for Jerry Royce. Two and one. Carter digging it out. Suter saving eight in his last 11 appearances. Bruce this season, by the way, has given up only two home runs in 51 innings of work. Not a bad fortnight's work for Royce. A no hitter, possibly the winner here. Might even get the MVP. Struck out the side, one of the innings he worked. Two and two, and that one got John Kibler, the plate umpire. Takes some guts back there, I'll tell you. John's all right, veteran National League umpire. He's whacked around before, Gary Carter checking with him. now each team with seven hits the two American League errors both committed by Randolph four two national stretch will go from first to the pitch and gets him swinging so the beat goes on and on and on 
nine straight 17 of 18 the National League does it again well we'll find out who the all-star game MVP is when we come back and we'll return to Dodger Stadium after this commercial and a word from our local station National League winning it four runs seven hits and no errors the American League two runs seven hits and Ladies two and errors your Jerry Royce wins it box Tommy John the loser let's get down to Bob Uecker thank you very much Al and for the presentation the most valuable player of this 1980 all-star game the commissioner of baseball mr Bowie coon ladies and gentlemen i am delighted on behalf of professional baseball to make a presentation of the commissioner's award to this year's 1980 most valuable player for a great offensive performance in this all-star game to mr ken griffey of the cincinnati reds <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much. That's great. Kenny, a uh, very important ball game. It's getting to be old hat now. Nine in a row for the National League and a uh, fine ball game for yourself, too. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, we just, you know, the guys and I were sitting there and talking. We decided to just go out and play baseball tonight. Cincinnati Reds uh, well represented tonight? Yes. Very, <laughs> very much so. All right. We'll be back with more from the All-Star Game here in Dodger Stadium following this brief message. He became the first National League base runner. It was the first National League hit, the first National League run. Came in the fifth inning, made it 2-1, and it eventually turned out to be a 4-2 win. Al Michaels, Keith Jackson, Howard Cosell, Don Drysdale, Bob Uecker saying so long. Our thanks to Alan Roth and Jerry Klein for their work in the booth. Final score, 4-2, the National League over the American League. Join us this Saturday for exclusive coverage of the United States Women's Open Golf Championship, live from Richland Country Club in Nashville, Tennessee, at 4 Eastern time. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. Coverage of the 1980 All-Star Game was produced by Dennis Lewin, directed by Chet Forty. Technical directors John Allen and Bill Morris. Associate directors Peter Lasser and Ned Simon. Tune in Saturday for ABC's Wide World of Sports. This week you'll see the WBC World Super Wellaway Championship. Morris Hope defends his title against Rocky Mattioli live from Wembley, England. In time permitting, national championship sprint car racing from Terre Haute, Indiana. 5 Eastern and Pacific, 4 Central time. The 1980 All-Star Game has been brought to you by Lowenbrow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. By Chevrolet, like baseball, hot dogs, and apple pie, it's an American tradition. By Allstate Insurance Companies, you're in good hands with Allstate. And by Mr. Goodwrench and the General Motors Parts Division. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what Friendly Skies are all about. The 1980 All-Star Game has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as a leader in sports television as we take another look at the MVP, Ken Griffey.